I used to do keyword research in a very inefficient way. So for example, if I was doing a website about fitness and I wanted a section on the site about exercise types, I would literally go to Ahrefs and I'll type in one by one squats, click on matching terms, and then I'll be looking through the list for interesting keywords. Goblet squats, split squats, Bulgarian split squats. What muscles do squats work? Squats muscles worked. Knee sleeve for squats. What do squats work? I would literally be going through and picking ones which were good, which ones were relevant, which ones I thought I could write a good article about, maybe low competition. And this was the way I did keyword research for a long time. I would then go to the next entity and click in bench press and I'll do the same until I had a big list of keywords and then I'd write the articles and it kind of worked but I find this approach very inefficient and there's a better way of doing it called programmatic keyword research this doesn't mean create a programmatic website it's just taking the approach of doing something programmatically something with a structure so the way I would do it the way, or the way I do it now is I, I do type in my, my entity. I just type in any one, bench press, squat, whichever one it might be. And what I'm looking for when I look through the list, I'm not keywords I want to add to my, to my target list. I'm looking for patterns of how people search. So I'm looking for things like, okay, form, form, okay? So... Bench press form. Does that mean people also search for uh, squats form, pull-ups form? Um, you know, um, Bulgarian split squat form, um, bicep curl form. So this is a pattern. Okay. Um, muscles worked. Bench press muscles worked, squats muscles worked, pull-ups muscles worked. This is a pattern. When you find these patterns, keyword research becomes really, really easy because it's not about finding ad hoc keywords. It's about finding the patterns that give you all the keywords, every single one of them. Because humans are similar, yeah? I know, I know we've been told every human is unique, but we're actually not. We all search for things in a very, very similar way. So taking this example here, muscles worked. There's also another one here. What muscles do bench press work? So muscles work and muscles worked to me are, are an interesting pattern. That means I can create a bank of content about all the different exercise types and talk about what muscles will work, worked or work. So because there's two different ones here, muscles worked and muscles work, I need to remember that they have the same intent. I don't want to create a different page for muscles worked and muscles work. So here's how I'll do this in a programmatic style. I would go muscles work and muscles worked. And that's the search in Ahrefs. And I'll click that. And I'll go to matching terms. And here we go. 13,335 keywords. Total vo volume 745k. Deadlift muscles worked. What muscles do push-ups work? What muscles do pull-ups work? What muscles do squats work? Overhead press muscles work. Look at this. This gives us the whole lay of the land. Okay. So some of these, yeah, might be a little bit competitive, but the keyword difficulty is quite low. That means the link building side of it, there's some vulnerability there. There's some weak spots. Um, this could be a, a content plan for a site. If you've got the budget and you've got the time, you could go after all these. You could categorize them right. You could get the topical coverage. And in time, you know, you'll rank for these things. Um, 
if you're on the, the lower end of, of budget wise and you want to rank for stuff quicker you can go for some lower competition stuff and i'm going to show you some filters here what i like to do to find the real low hanging fruit you know the end game would be to rank for all of these the end game there's no reason why not but if you want some priority you know you can go after these low hanging fruits so one of them is lowest dr so lowest dr will show us in the top five a weak spot and why do we like this we like this because it means google is actually saying this is not all about how authoritative the the domains are we we're ranking stuff in the top five that that have got really low dr because there's not enough authority sites covering this you know that that's the logic that we that we're having as seos we're seeing a weak spot we're seeing a vulnerability in the serp that we can not exploit that's the wrong word but we can um we can certainly help the searchers a lot more with the information they're looking for so i'd like to go 10 in the top five so if there's something with less than dr10 in the top five only showing me these keywords now this drops the list to 300 and we've got a bit more of a manage manageable list to go after first So as you can see, abduct, abductor machine muscles worked, kettlebell clean muscles worked. What muscles do handstands work? Let's take a look at some of these. So you can see here, what muscles do handstands work? 250 searches a month. Not huge, but this is a volume game. Um, the top one is a DR1. Number two is DR4. We've got some higher DAs going down the list, but top one, DR1 and no backlinks, that's, I mean, that's something. So we look at the page and it's very simple. It's got like a, an image and just basically text. I mean, it, look, it looks pretty AI, but these, these uh, images are pretty good. I mean, I say it looks AI, I've got absolutely nothing to base that off. It's just whenever I see walls of text these days, I just think, well, AI could have done that. Um, let's look at the second one. So this one doesn't work. Okay. And then we've got some high high DR ones. Let's check out another SERP. Let's just see what's going on. Tire flip muscles worked. So DR fourteen, DR fourteen. Yeah, some low DRs in the uh, in the top five here. Let's take a look at this one. None of them below DR ten. Strangely, even though that's the filter, maybe there's a bit of a lag between the filter and the actual DR. Um, again, looks very simple. We've got, I mean, this is an e-commerce store and this is like a blog on it, but we've got like a couple of images. Pretty simple. So I think the approach would be you could get AI to write the bulk, the first draft of the content, but then there is definitely a need to go through with some real images um, maybe pull in some YouTube videos on this. Hand grippers muscles worked. Let's have a look at this. DR51, DR10. Let's have a look what the DR10 is doing. Backlinks are all very, very low. Again, yeah, we've got an image. This looks like an e-commerce store for just hand stuff. So very, very niche. Probably gives them the, the benefit in this SERP. But the, the text is very, very simple, very short, and it just has an image. But yeah, we've got 300 keywords to go after, 26k total volume. What I do like to do is cluster these. Um, the reason being is, is you know, reverse, th these examples here, reverse lunges, muscled, muscles worked, and reverse lunge, muscles worked. Um, those two keywords are exactly the same. Um, it's just lun lunges and lunge and then what muscles does swimming work and 
what muscle does swimming work or swimming muscles worked. You know, these keywords are very, very similar. They're going to have the same intent. They're going to have the same SERP. When you cluster them, it means they get bunched together. Um, so you go after, you target all those keywords that are similar with the same page. It stops. Um, it just stops any unnecessary uh, pages, and then you can get more traffic to to one page. Um, Hundred ninety four clusters, and as you can see, within a cluster there are multiple keywords, but the cluster volume is high. So look at this one: reverse lunge muscles worked two point eight k volume, and then we click this keywords. And you can see we've got nine keywords, all very similar. What muscles do back lunges work? Muscles worked in reverse lunge, rear lunges. See, that's a different way of saying um, reverse lunge, rear lunge. But you can see all these keywords are like low volume, but added up, it's quite significant. Um, and what, what you'd want to do is export all of these secondary keywords and get the article to cover all of them, because they'll start ranking for multiple keywords. Um, but for a first draft, for the first draft of the website, you can just basically take this list, you can put it into an AI writer tool like um, Cuppa or Koala or any of the tools really. Um, I haven't got a preference. I've been using Koala, it's all right. Um, they're all using the same same thing at the end of the day, right? Um you want to get that first draft and then you want to get some images in there for this particular niche, I would say. You want to get some real images in there. And again, this this is just one pattern. You could go after multiple patterns on the same site. So form is another one. Um, and I'll show you how to do the form one because that's a bit harder. So if you stuck around until this bit, let me let me give you something a little bit special. So if you type in form, you're going to get all kinds of forms. Google Docs forms, W9 form. Um, what is a 1040 form? How do hurricanes form? So you've got all this stuff going on. What you need is some um, entities in there to filter by. So if you go to chat GPT, give me a list of 20 exercises I can't spell exercises I've never been able to spell it ever okay so we've got a 20 20 exercises here we can put in as filter to Ahrefs obviously there's there's hundreds of exercises so we could we could ask chat GPT to go to go 50 100 um, but let's see what we get from this so as you can see 727 keywords volume 50 there are some more more competitive keywords here but if we put the lowest dr10 in there let's see what we get oh, we've only got one we've got one one in there that's uh, so this is quite competitive so form is a lot more competitive than muscles worked but you get the process, you get this this pattern. Um, certainly, if you had more budget, you could go after these keywords. Um, let's see what makes them so special. Oh, so we've got some YouTube. Yeah, you, form lends itself to, to YouTube. Um, so this is where you're getting a lot of video stuff in the SERPs. But anyway, that process is... Is something that changed for me in the past three or four years where I'll look at things a bit more in a programmatic approach. I'm not a programmatic website guy, but the the way of doing keyword research to get scale, you know, to get hundreds of keywords of the same pattern really resonates with me because it means you, you're you not messing around with, with like just picking, cherry picking keywords. That's okay for, for really small sites. But if you want to scale out your content and create lots and lots of content, you need to take this programmatic approach, even if you're not writing the content programmatically. You know, even if you're writing the content one by one, it's good to have this programmatic approach. And it can work with any niche. Every niche has got patterns. you just got to find them.
So like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next video.